Hey everyone, uh, we're here today to do an unboxing of a Stern Star Wars Premium Edition. Uh, one of my last videos we did an LE version where my Joe unboxed his uh, pinball machine, his LE. So this is going to be the Premium Edition and this will have the different artwork that is on the cabinet and the head and stuff like that. The play feels the same, the artwork's different all over, but you know, it's more of the, uh, the evil side of Darth Vader's, the dark side. So, um, again, we're going to do a play field overview. It's not much different than the LE, really, in it at all. And do some gameplay of it as well. So, stay tuned. Okay, so let's take a look at the cabinet art. And I have my, kind of my light on top of my camera, which isn't the best. It kind of casts a bit of a shadow. But as we're panning down, it should focus more on the artwork as we go. Uh, so, on this side, you have the Adat Walkers. And it's pretty cool. It's a nice scene, you know, from the Star Wars movie. I think it was from Empire Strikes Back with the uh, snow speeders getting blasted and stuff like that. So the artwork is, like I said, it's pretty, pretty detailed. I think it's the best artwork out of all the packages that is available for Star Wars. So that's that side. So let's, look, let's look at the coin door decal here. And that's just some of the characters, you know, from again, from the half scene, it's the stormtroopers, uh, you know, blasting through some stuff. The stormtroopers in their snow suits and the regular Imperial stormtroopers, like from the first movie to the, uh, to the other side of the, of the cabinet. So you got that, which is pretty cool too. So let's look at the other side of the cabinet. On this side, you got the Star Destroyer. And, you know, a couple other ships getting blasted. So, again, pretty detailed artwork. Pretty cool. Basic rails, you know. Not, you don't have the Steve Ritchie games anymore, like with ACDC or Star Trek, where you get, you know, a lot for your money, the premium. You know, ordinary legs, ordinary rails, kind of, kind of stinks because Steve Ritchie's games used to be, you know, better than pretty much all the other designers when they would come out with a premium. But I guess that's changed at Stern. So here's the, uh, the cabinet art, the head art, and that's again another stormtrooper, I think flying the uh, the tie or yeah the uh, the tie fighter. I don't know what they used to call those guys in the movie if they had a name, but I think that's what they were doing. Display, color display down there. Really cool. I think they did a great job with that stern. And let's turn the light back on here. And here is a regular stormtrooper on the other side of the head. Really cool. I think the story was originally like the LE was supposed to have a good and a bad side, dark side, and the, you know, the, the rebels, and I guess that kind of got nixed, and this is kind of what they came up with after that, where it just never was about, people were just starting rumors at that point, so who knows, but, you know, play field again, I did this on the LE, my friend Joe's LE, and it's the same thing, you got the Death Star here to the left, Thing opens up like when you get to that mode, which is really hard to get to. And let's just scroll down. This is with the lights off. We'll do a quick one with the lights on as well. You know, a couple toys, very few toys in this game. The Typh or the uh, Millennium Falcon that with the light that lights up in the back. You know, you got the plastics that are different on this one than the other ones. You got Boba Fett on this plastic here. And then if you kind of scroll up. Yeah, the whole good side of the uh, of the Star Wars series there, Darth Vader, Ben Kenobi. You know the big uh, inserts. Got the other game, the other toy on the playfield, the Tie Fighter, and your pop bumpers. You have Boba Fett on this one. Uh, I don't know what's kind of on that one. It's hard to see what's totally on that one. But 
I'm sure it's, a, it's something from, you know, the uh, the dark side. And let's scroll, scroll down this side. Again, the artwork is the same. And on that slingshot down here, you have another stormtrooper down there. So that's really the only difference between the LE and the premium. The clear coat's really nice on it. Uh, it's pretty, I don't see any ghosting as of yet. Hopefully I won't see any. And I'll probably just take a quick like uh, vacuum cleaner with a brush on it just to kind of get the dust and stuff out of it. Game kind of came pretty dusty, but that's, uh, I'll just clean that up a little bit before I start putting balls in it. I put my own balls from Pinball Life in it. I don't use the certain balls. People say they scratch. I don't know if that's true or not, but I don't really use them because I have my own. So, so yeah, so let's take a quick look. Put some balls in this game, clean it up a little bit, and then uh, turn it on and just take a quick look overview of the play field again with the lights so on. So let's check out the translate in the game. And this is, again, the premium model with the dark side as the whole translate. And there's three translates in this series, and this is again for the premium. And uh, this, I think, is the best translate out of the three, in my opinion. It's got all like the villains on it: Darth Vader, Boba Fett, uh, Bespin Guard, some stormtroopers, stuff like that. The Emperor is in the left hand side there. So um, Death Star. So this is the uh, the lighted translate. So that looks really cool too. So let's check out the playfield, and this is after, i say about a month of owning the game, uh, like the playfield, and see the wear on the playfield, you know, the dimple, stuff like that, and just some of the stuff that was added to it as I owned this game for about a month. Okay, so this is the playfield for after about a month's worth of gameplay, and it's got a lot of gameplay. Uh, not a lot, but enough, I guess. And it, in this game, you really have to set this game up the right way to really get the game to work right. And that means like balancing it left to right and up and down. I think it's at like 6.5 angle right now of pitch. Uh, that's what it's kind of recommended I think for this game. But um, but yeah, we're going to go over some issues too that I think are with the game as it came out of the box. Some things you need to adjust to make this play better than, uh, than if you didn't adjust the different things on the game. And again, we're going to look at some of the dimples that are on the playfield. And I know dimples are common and that's what happens when you play a game and all that. But um, I wouldn't say there's horrible dimples in the game. But there's enough that kind of is caused by ball, you know, air balls, stuff like that. And... You know, this target right here, the TIE Fighter, that causes some major air balls on this game. And if we get, like, kind of close to the play field, uh, you know, there's some dimples in that area, especially in the middle of the play field. There's some dimples down here by Luke, R2-D2, Princess Leia, and Han Solo. There's also some dimples down here by the flippers, which is kind of crazy, because the ball, this game is just... You want to talk about a, a brutal game. These outlanes on this game, mine are in the middle. They're not even all the way open. But these outlanes are brutal. The ball bounces left to right. And I don't have them at the, you know, the final, the bottom uh, peg here. Which is another opening to go to, which is right here. But uh, I think that I'm going to do that to really get farther in the game. Because I don't really get that far with the way that they are. And I'm an okay player. And yeah, this game is pretty brutal. And let's look at the next uh, part of this video. And what we're gonna do is just show some of the adjustments of this game of what needs to be done to make this game play better. Um, you know, basically things that, that need to be tweaked and things that need to be brought in or move left to right to really make this game play the way that it should because out of the box it's there's some cheap drains on this game so let's take a look at that now okay to start this right out kick right here uh, this is where the mystery shot is in the Tatooine shot 
and basically this shot, if it's not adjusted properly, this shot will go right down to your the middle of your flipper, or you know in the middle, but you know in the middle of your flippers, I should say, and not to either the left or right to get a good shot. So there's two ways to, to handle this shot right here. Is if you take this plastic off here, there's a couple bolts here. There's one here, there's one here, and I think there's another one here as well where my finger is. That those need to come off. This ramp needs to come off here. And this ramp is taken off down here on the slingshot right here. If you take this nut off and loosen this up, this whole ramp kind of pulls off. And then you would come back to this plastic here. And then you would actually take these nut, these three uh, bolts off, this, this screw and the two nuts. And then right here where my finger is, about like in this area, there's like an adjuster. If you loosen it right in the middle, you could turn this uh, kick out left or right to adjust it to whatever flipper you wanted to shoot at. So I recommend that too if you're getting shots down the middle on this game because that needs to be adjusted. Um, even after adjusting, it just seems like if you have it on full blast, it doesn't matter. It's still going to sometimes shoot down the middle. So you might want to go into your um, system of the game and uh, lower that the, the kick out of the power of this to kind of make that not shoot down the middle so much. So let's take a look at how to okay, do that. Okay, we're now in the system mode here of the game. We're in the service menu. Let's go back one. So let's get into that service menu. Let's go into adjust under SW, Star Wars here. And I, I believe it's this one right here. It's number two. Feature adjustment, right eject power. And install, I think it's like 40 is the default. I have my down about 22 and the kick out is less severe when it comes out. Not with the less power and not having so many drains down the middle, even after the adjustment. So I would recommend doing that with your game if you're still having shots down the middle after that uh, after that out kick hole. So you could try that. And we could also take a look at another part of the game that causes issues with people as well. Okay, this shot right here, this horseshoe shot, sometimes again causes shots down the middle. If you hit the, hit the ball really fast down this shot right here where the video mode is and the Hoth shot and it just swings all the way around this horseshoe coming out to this side under the Death Star the ball shoots right down the middle sometimes not all the time but sometimes and I believe you could adjust that too if these plastics come off here you could take it off with these screws here I still have to do mine I'm gonna do this probably eventually if these come off and there's a rail underneath here you could bend this rail in or out a little bit to give more adjustment on the game of where that ball should travel out. It's not as bad as online, so I don't really want to go and do anything major adjustments right now. But I, but that's how you would actually go and, and adjust that shot. So uh, if you're having shots like that where this thing just hauls butt down the middle, you might want to try that as well. I had to do that on my rail on this side here. Same thing, I loosened it from the ball, bent it um, in a little bit, so I pushed it that way towards the cabinet, because all it would do is come down here off this rail and just kind of drain down and shoot right down the middle of the speed of this game. Again, the game is really fast, it's really brutal. Even at 6.5 pitch, it's pretty fast. So again, I'd adjust, push that in a little bit. I, I unscrewed these. While I was adjusting this out kick as we uh, showed in the previous video and loosened the rail on the bottom of the game under the cabinet, under the play field, I should say, and bent that in a little bit. So you might want to do that as well. Also, other people are having issues with, um, I believe, this shooter lane here. When the ball kicks out, sometimes it, it goes right down this out lane to the far left. And there's a way to adjust that too. I believe if you take these this bolt off somewhere this plastic there's an adjustment under there to adjust that rail so it's not so left or right so you could adjust that as well so you might want to do that too mine's kind of in the middle there's times when it does go down the middle and there are times when it doesn't so it's not horrible but I think down the road I will adjust that as well I also put a couple mods that I found from a Barnes & Noble from this toy company or it's like a game company that makes this some Star Wars game and it's this little uh, TIE fighter here I don't think that's like some kind of TIE fighter bomber or something like that and also up on top of the play field 
there's a uh, slave one that's the Boba Fett ship right here and so I just screwed it onto the bottom here of the screw and what I have holding it on is these uh, little like metal rods that were from another mod I had from the TV installation on my Twilight Zone and Adams family that came with it so I just used them screwed that into the back of the ship to hold it up like that so it's just another mod on the game you know it's just another plastic this game is very like low modded I should say from Stern it did not come with a lot of mods on it that's one of the complaints about this game um, for the price of what this game costs and for the mods that came with it it's quite underwhelming of mods but the gameplay is really well it's a fun game the coding is really cool the uh, the sound bites in it and the uh, the call out stuff like that it's really cool it's just I'm a big Star Wars fan and the game it's it really I know other people kind of bash the game I really want to like this game but again it's like a lot of flaws in the game of the design in my opinion that caused the game for me not to like it at times again it's like this shot you know it comes out of here and it shoots down the middle the shot here out of the uh, the shooter lane it just goes and it drains right to the out lane on the left hand side which is down here and then again you got this horseshoe here that the ball just rips around that side you know right here comes around comes around here and just goes right down the middle and it's just very unfair but there's a lot of adjustment to this game and it can be quite frustrating to trying to adjust this game to your liking and getting it to play the right way so that's my opinion on the game. The game, it is fun, but again, it is a lot of work to get uh, get it to play the correct way. So, that's the playfield all lit up. And next, what we're gonna do is take a look under the playfield, and then we're gonna also look at the back box too, and see the, uh, the way that it's set up under both of those. Okay, this is under the playfield, so that's the top of the playfield where the flippers and everything are. That's the things on the left and right um, under the board with the solenoids. So if we scroll down, again, the play field underneath is quite uh, underpopulated, I'd say, because there's not much going on on top of the play field. So you have your drop, drop downs right here. You know, the couple light boards and stuff like node boards on the game. So, but, you know, that's kind of the bottom of the play field here. That's the bottom. And there's a whole big mechanism here in the back that is all magnets that are on the back of the game. And basically that runs the uh, the hyperloop on the game. Kind of like on uh, High Speed 2, the getaway. Same thing. It's got that magnet that run that big loop. You know, the turbocharger. And that's kind of how that magnet thing works. Or like on uh, NASCAR by uh, Pat Lawler. You can see right there in that opening between those three boards, there's a big opening right there. And, you know, it looks like that something maybe should have been put there at one point, maybe not. I don't know if there's, like, major licensing agreements with Disney and Lucasfilms or something, but, you know, that's the way the game was kind of designed, and that's how it was finished. So let's uh, take a look at the back box. This game runs the Spike 2 board, and we're going to take a look at that and just see how the back box is set up on this game as well. I think I did on my friend's uh, Joe's pinball machine under his LE when he got it. But it's the same thing, but we'll take a look at the premium and see how it's set up in the uh, Now that we have the game open, we're going to put a couple mods or things that need to be put into the machine. So first we're going to start off with a shaker motor. And this came, I believe, from Pinball Life. And how you set it up is there's four screw holes at the bottom of the cabinet. And the weight, the counterweights, go to the top and bottom of the cabinet not left to right and the cable that comes on it you want to route that cable down below and away from this counterweight because if it gets stuck in that counterweight you're going to rip the wire right apart when the thing starts going off so basically the wire goes you know you put in these wire ties here that are in the cabinet to kind of clean it up we'll do that in a minute and then here on the board I have the connector already in there I think it's CN2 but it's at the far right, it's right here where my finger is, and it's notched. So 
you can only put it in one way. There's four pins on that with a gap in between like a couple, like one of the pins here in the beginning. And then you just kind of put it in like that, push it in and you're good to go. And then also too with the shaker motor, you have the, uh, the cover that goes on top of the shaker motor as well to protect the wiring from the uh, from getting caught and this is the, the cover that would fit over the top of that like that and then you screw that down on the top here there's two holes on the top of that shaker motor here that that mount would screw into and it comes with four screws for the ca uh, cabinet as well so let's put this all together and take another quick video after everything is kind of tidied up and ready to go. Okay, so now the shaker motor is installed and completed. So we have the cover on top that's held with these two screws. The wire runs, goes through the wire ties within the cabinet. And, you know, Stir strategically places these so the wire could go through all that, you know, to kind of tidy up the wires so and get snagged on anything. And again, it gets connected down here at the bottom uh, where my finger is down here. I think it's C2, which is right there. So it's right next to this bigger connector here. You have a connector that nothing is in, and you got the connector right here on the end. So that's how you put in the shaker motor. It's really easy. I mean, it takes you 10 minutes if that. So let's get on to the next install on the game. Okay, so the next mod is this border that covers the display screen in the middle of the play field. And this is from the Ulix store. And basically how it's held on is that there's double stick tape on the back. So you remove that, peel that off, and just stick it onto wherever you want it on the display. So we're gonna do that next and see how that works out. And that's with the, the cover on the display installed. And just a word to the wise is that, that sticky stuff they have in the back that double stick tape is pretty sticky so make sure you get it down the first time like where you want it to be because it's kind of a pain to get off if you need to so let's take a look at some of the other features on the game okay so another uh enhancement of this game or mod or whatever you want to call it is i put cliffies on it and what cliffy sells for the game it's the uh, shooter lane protector so you have your protector here and you have your protector here on this side uh, that protect your shooter lane from getting damaged and how you install both of these is you need to take off the apron of the game to put this one on and I usually take out my mechanism my trough that's going to the play field here and take a look it might be a bit dark but the trough is right here where my finger is so there's like six screws that hold that in I take that down and then I also I believe take out this plunger too here and basically there's screws under here under the rail that are here and there's one down here too there's two and this is a metal rail now so this lifts off and then i just apply that uh, cliffy protector on the right hand side here and for the left there's a once this comes off you need to pop this like rivet thing out here where my finger is with a uh with like a mallet and go easy when you're popping it out like you gotta like kind of bang it out but then that comes out there might be two actually here there's one in the farther down that you need to take out as well there's two and you pop those out with a plunk with a mallet and then you put the uh, the protector on and then these need to go back on these rivets again you know here there's like one here and there's one here but don't over tighten it because if you over tighten it when you're putting this back on it's going to flex this metal and you don't want that to happen you're going to put a big bend in it so you don't want to do that just kind of snug it but don't over tighten it again for this you know for here too you know, you take that metal rail off put it back on and when you're done then these screws down here where my finger is i can show you here those get tightened again and then the rail goes back on you know, so the screws kind of stick out of here now, not like the old wood rails where the screw kind of disappears into the wood, you know, and that's really it. So that's another thing I added to the game, these Cliffy protectors, which is, you know, Cliffy makes a great product. I have other videos with his stuff. 
and he makes a great product with his protectors, so I highly recommend it. I think they're like 25 bucks, and it's well worth it, you know, for any game that you have to put Cliffy protectors on it. So, so that's the installation of the Cliffy protectors. Okay, so this is the back box. This is the Spike 2 board that's right there. Very small. There's not, compared to the old games or even the Spike 1 board, I think the Spike 1 board was a bit bigger than that. I think I had a comparison again in my friend uh, Joe's Star Wars to his Ghostbusters game. And there's not a lot going on back here, to tell you the truth. There's a power supply in the bottom right-hand corner. Uh, you got some speakers under here, you know, under the, uh, the DMD board here, the panel. That's the monitor and the two speakers. And again, that's the board up on top here where everything kind of plugs into. And that's it. That's what you got today for your game, you know. And you've got the USB ports in here that you put in your memory stick to update the, uh, the ROM of the game and the, the disk image. And, you know, you got your wires that kind of come into the game. And that's really it. And, you know, these come off the node boards here. These, these, uh, Cat 5 or Cat 6 cables here, RJ45 uh, patch cables, and that's kind of that's kind of it. That's what runs your game. So, and this panel is pretty cool now too. You know, it's got which I'm sure people have seen. It's, it's such a great design though by Stern. You know, it just kind of comes down and up like this. You know, it's got your lock in here. So then you just put in your translate here while this is open, like that. You put your translate here. And then once your translate's kind of seated, then you just lock it with that. You know, it's it's it's, it's a really great design. So, so that's really that. That's that's the back panel of the game. Um, let's look at some video footage of the game, and you know some of the video callouts and stuff like that with it being from the monitor and the sound bites of the game. And we'll end up the video. So again, thanks for watching the video. Really appreciate it. Appreciate all the subscribers to the channel. It's been really cool to uh, see the subscribers jump in the past month to about 50 uh, more subscribers to the channel. So I so appreciate the support of everybody. And again, you can see all my stuff at www.pinballsupernova.com. And I have my Facebook page, my YouTube, my Twitter, and my Instagram, uh, and my blog links on that page. So thanks again. And have, have a good one. Okay, so in this part of the video, what we're going to do is concentrate on some of the rules in the game. And there's a couple rules in the game that we need to go over, and they are the stand-ups, which are over here, the drop-downs, which are over here, and then also the shooter lane where you hit like your uh, your skill shot in the beginning of the game. So those are a couple things, and there's a couple other rules that I just want to talk about briefly in the game. You know, it's the stuff that I kind of learned as I played the game. There's also a add a ball, which I don't know. Some people know about it, some people don't. It really helps in some of the modes, but we'll talk about that briefly too once we get to that. But let's start off with um, one of the modes here, and the mode that we'll talk about first, I guess, are the stand-ups, which are here. And basically how that works is that you in a game you can set your stand-ups here so when you hit them and the multiplier like advances as you hit it so we have a video camera on the dmd and we also have a camera on the play field so let's start a game i have the volume turned kind of down in the game so you can hear me talk but you're going to hear like on these multipliers here you see how they're all red arrows and stuff like that too but let's just kind of zoom in on that a little bit you have your multipliers here, your stand-up. So if we hit that, just look at the DMD after we launch the ball. You see how this is turning, your X is advancing as I hit these multipliers. So you're gonna hear that go, and now we went into multi-fighter multiplier. Let's kind of get that out of the way. So we'll let that kind of run out. But you're gonna hear this. Like, if you let it sit for a minute, you don't hit these targets for a couple seconds. You'll hear that noise and also your inserts will flash to indicate that this is running out and you need to hit it again to keep your uh, multiplier at the level you had it. Now you can see it went back down to 2x, you had it like at 12x or something. So you need to constantly hit these to keep your multiplier at where it should be. 
and again, like we'll hit it, and you can see it advancing as we hit him, as we go up. And then again, you'll hear it thump if you don't hit that for a while, and you'll see your multiplier start flashing here as it's going to run out. So they're starting, the inter inserts are flashing. And you can hear that noise, that doom, 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 doom noise. That means it's running out, so you need to hit that again. So that's one of the, um, the modes in here, or one of the, um, the rules in the game. So let's talk about how you could switch out your multipliers to, where, to different shots of where you want them to hit. So let's go to that next. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is show how to change your multipliers on the play field. So we have a camera on the button on the uh, lockdown bar, and we also have a camera on the play field. We don't have one on a DMD because I don't have enough cameras, but what we're gonna do now is show how this is like the button is flashing now. So we're gonna plunge the ball. So we're gonna let that go. And now what we're gonna do is, you can't see the DMD, but when we hit this button, the multiplier shot on the top turns red. But now if you look at your shots on the play field, so we're gonna hit the flipper button. You can see how they change. How these change, these X, red X's change to different shots. Like now the red X is here. Now the red X is here. Uh, now the red X is here. So, and then once you get your shot for your multipliers, this will give you more points. You hit the button again to lock it in and your multiplier on the DMD will turn green. This will turn, well, this always stays yellow. But now these turn green, but now if we hit it again, they turn red, and now you can move them again. So whatever shot you want to do, and then you hit it again to lock it in, and then they turn green again. So that's just another um, type of uh, rule in the game that you could do to give you more points. So let's look at another shot. What we're going to do now is talk about the, um, the skill shots in the game on how they work. And there's actually a couple ways you could get skill shots in the game. Okay, so now there's two ways to get skill shots in the game. And the way to do that is here with the standups when you launch your ball, if you hit that one of those targets, or your force shots over here on the left hand side that are drop downs. So the way that it works is when you launch a ball, we'll kind of talk about it, then I'll show you. But when you launch a ball, you'll see like a display on the screen with like multipliers and stuff like that. So if your ball hits one of those targets, you get that multiplier. But you could also luck out and hit this and these at the same time. Like it'll bounce off to this and you'll get um, skill shots for both targets. So basically how that works is that when you plunge the ball, the four shots, whatever is lit and whatever you hit, uh, you'll get that um, type of, I guess, shot or like that, that treasure or mystery shot given to you. And basically how it goes is that if you hit the F on the launch, it'll light, light mystery, which is on this side over here. If you hit the O, it hits the light escape, which is like your ball save over here on this uh, out lane on the right hand side. The R, if you hit the R in the drop down, it'll give you the, uh, the video mode, which is here on this shot that does a Millennium Falcon through the asteroid field. The C will give you double multipliers, and the E is the mystery shot, which is here. Or no, I'm sorry, it's a lightsaber duel. So it, that's the shot there too. So as we're talking about that, well, let, let's show it before we go on. So we're gonna start a new game. We'll play Luke, but we'll try to plunge the ball. And then if I hit this, we get that as your um, your skill shot. So if we hit one of these now, at the same time, I believe we have double multipliers that went off. So that's kind of how it goes. So if you hit or you do a plunge and it bounces off to this, you'll get both skill shots. So that's just another part in the game that um, maybe some people don't know. So let's talk about next the uh, add a ball. Okay, so what we're going to talk about now is the multi ball or the add a ball in multi ball. So I just cleared out all three um, areas of the uh, the Death Star. So now I'm going to go for the the uh, what do you call it? The multi ball in Death Star. So how that goes is that once you do your shot now, if I get it up here, I'm going to hit these targets on the force. So you're going to see this turn orange, and that's how you get your add a ball. So let's get it up there. So now we're gonna destroy the Death Star. There's no DMD, I don't have another camera. But so let's uh, pick that. So now we 
start a Death Star. So now you see the, the button is white and yellow. So now if I hit these force targets, now it turns orange. So now if I hold this down, I get the Atta Balls. So that's how you get Atta Balls in a multi-ball. You, you hold that target, you hit those targets down, and then you get the balls back um, from your Atta Ball. So some people don't know that. It's kind of going over some of the rules maybe some people don't know. Uh, but again, you start all the, the multi-ball in whatever Endor, Death Star, Hoth, or Tatooine. And then once you get three lit and you go into the multi-ball mode of that, that's how you, and then you hit the force targets then once you're in multi-ball, that's how you get that add a ball. I don't think it happens in X-Wing multi-ball, but it does happen in all the other multi-balls. So there's another mode too, there's just a couple other inserts we could talk about, is that when you light these inserts here on this ramp and this ramp here, or this ramp, I'm sorry, the other out lane or the other uh, side ramp, whatever you want to call that. Um, when they're yellow, then you start the hyperdrive multi-ball. So how that goes is that once this is yellow, this will be flashing. And then once you get up there, you'll start the hyperdrive and you'll get some points for that as well. And also there's another mode of Boba Fett mode. And if you have the inserts that are white, if you hit that insert, then you start the Boba Fett mode. And how that goes is that I think if you hit Boba Fett like five times or four or five times of those white inserts, then you'll start the Boba Fett mode. So that's how you start that. And also too, with these drop downs, it's another thing to go over, is that if you drop them, I think like once, you all three, all five of them, you start the mystery. If you drop all three, I wanna say you start video mode, I think. And then if you drop five of these down, five, you know, five times, then you start the uh, lightsaber duel mode. So you gotta drop them down like three times. You gotta drop all those targets down to get into the video mode. Drop them all once, you do the mystery. You drop them five times, all of them down, you start the lightsaber duel uh, video mode. So that's just another mode. So that's really the modes. I mean, the other modes are, you know, if you're when you're going for your shots, the purple is Death Star. Um, if you go for the green, that's Endor shots, the Tatooine are orange. So that's the shots that you go for, the blue is Hoth. So when you see whatever inserts lit on the play field at that time, that's what the shots you go for to finish the, the mode that you're in. And you could stack modes as well, as you all know. Uh, if you have, like, say, Hoth and Endor, you'll have blue and green shots. So if you shoot all those shots, then you're, you're kind of ending the mode quicker because you have two modes going at one time. So that's kind of that. And, you know, it's a good game. It's as fast as heck, and it's brutal. It, these outlines are really brutal in this game, too. But, um, but that's kind of my game, my, my rule you know, my rules and everything I could think of to go over that maybe people don't know. So what we're going to do is just do a quick gameplay video on it. Uh, just kind of go over some of the stuff we talked about. I'll just show you how they work. Maybe I could try to call out when I'm doing it and we'll take it from there. So again, stay tuned for the gameplay video. Okay, so let's start a game. I'm gonna be R2D2 in the game. So we're gonna start with the light Death Star missions in your mode. So now what we're gonna try to do is get our skill shot. And the two yellow inserts that are lit, that starts your hyperball shot to give you a bonus. So, and also too, you could change your multipliers on the play field. Now they're on Death Star, Endor, and video mode. But you could change them wherever you want in the play field and lock them in. So I usually start them over here by those three missions over there. And to get to light a mission, you got to get it three times, like Endor three times, Hoth three times, and Death Star, I think with R2, is already lit, if you choose that in the beginning. So, let's change our things, hit our, so now we're also, too, we're going to go for our stand-ups that are blinking up there, too, for our skill shot. So we hit that, and also our drop down, so we get two skill shot points. Now we're trying to capture the ball. So 
So now we got our mystery shot. So now we got our hyper drive or space in it. So now we let Hoth. So now this is the Hoth mode. But now we started with Death Star. So now we could uh, choose two modes at one time. So they stack them. So we'll go for these two. So now we want to go for the purple and blue shots together. So we have another mystery shot. And a drain, of course. So go for TIE Fighters. Another drain. Now we're going to try for the TIE Fighter multi ball here. So we hit it. So now we hit your lockdown bar button. So it's that risk of word, you know, that you're playing for. So now, I believe we finished both modes. So now, what we're gonna do, we could go up to get the video mode, it's lit during the Hoth uh, mode over there. So maybe we'll just shoot for that. So we got that, so now it should be video mode. So now you gotta navigate the asteroid field here and you could hit the, uh, the lockdown button to gain speed to get more asteroids to pass. So you want to slow down sometimes because you don't know where these asteroids are going to kind of going to go. So you got a perfect bonus and clear a lot, but so now we could stack modes again. So now we have the blue and the purple, which is De Death Star and Hoth. So we'll go for a destroy Death Star and um, the mode. So again, now if we hit the force targets, our button should turn orange to give us an add ball. I didn't do. So now we got the Hoth, so we'll uh, finish this one off if we can. So now we got the add ball lid on our lockdown because it's blue and orange from hitting the force targets. Because once we're in a multi ball and you hit that, it gives you the add ball option. Once you get into multi ball and hit the force targets. Down bar button. So 
now we're in TIE Fighter Monkey Ball. Because we got enough TIE Fighters. You gotta hit 35 to get TIE Fighter Monkey Ball. So now it's got to do a ball search to get to release the balls. So now we have our extra ball lit, so I just got that as well. And also lit Boba Fett, Escape from Boba Fett, and that's by getting the white inserts. So now we gotta hit the white inserts to try to get Boba Fett. And the white insert here is up the middle right there. The next one is by the video mode. The next one here is to the right. We didn't do it. So we got another extra ball, which is great. So we're gonna change our inserts here for the uh, multipliers. So we're going to line them up in the middle here by Endor and the video mode. So we'll go for a Tatooine, I guess. So we got the extra ball again, another one. Extra balls, I think, are by like getting so many TIE Fighters and also through the mystery shot. You, almost, you might also be able to get one through the pop bumpers. So now we have an Endor lit. So since we have Endor and pretty much all the modes lit, we could go for, you know, whatever we want to go for here. So we could stack some missions. So we have one more Endor to go and I believe two more Tatooine to go. So we'll just go with this one, I guess. So that's an orange shot. Another arm shot, I think. So now we're going to mystery shot. Down the middle. So we got another uh, free ball. So we'll go for TIE Fighters, I guess. Because we can maybe get another free ball, maybe. So thank God for the ball save. That's another orange shot that we kind of hit. And now we need one more to the left here, which can kind of go all the way up. Which that one did. So now we can hit TIE Fighter. We also have lightsaber dual uh, blinking. I believe one more shot on that target. So we have one more drop down that needs to be hit. We'll put in a pop so we'll get some. Uh... So we 
trying to get the green shots now, I believe. Saber dual lit. So we're going to try to go for that next. So now we got Lake Saber dual. So now we got to hit the blue and red shots. Red gives you more time, and blue has the characters escape uh, to the ship. So your object is to get all four characters to escape. Uh, so that was pretty unsuccessful. So overall it was a decent game. It wasn't great, but so we went over some of the modes, what we, you know, went over in, a, in the gameplay. So, got over a billion, which is good. Got to some of the modes that we wanted to see, so, so that's pretty much the video. So, hope you enjoyed the video. It's pretty long. Kind of went over the game pretty in depth. So, uh, game's pretty enjoyable once you get your pinball machine kind of set up and um, leveled it's got to get leveled really well left and right up and down i just kind of centered it in the bubble on the uh, the level on the game you know on by the uh, shooter lane so it's jacked down pretty low you don't want to jack it too high because it's just too fast the ball flips over the, the flippers the ball comes flying down bounces over the flippers bounces over other things so it's got to be leveled the correct way to really enjoy this game so again, thanks for watching my videos. Really appreciate it. Uh, you can go to my homepage, www.pinballsupernova.com. Go to my YouTube, my Facebook, uh, my Twitter, and Instagram pages from there. And again, thanks for all the subscribers on YouTube. Really appreciate it. And I'll talk to you soon. Thanks.